that's not untypical also because other people have died during raids on homes. People have been killed by the uh, use of tear gas in confined spaces. Uh, people have been killed by gas grenades. Um, and this is, this is the product of the repression that people will, people will die. Uh, and also people have died in detention. So that the phenomenon of extrajudicial killing is one that needs much closer attention than it has received in the past. Now we move on to the next speaker, who is Dr. Rula al Safa, who is a former prisoner of conscience and with the medics and the head of the Nurses' Union. So we have great pleasure in asking her to speak. Good morning. Um, good morning, everybody. Lord Avery, thank you for having us and thank you for your support for the people of Bahrain. Uh, I'm going to go and fly to my slide. Can you put the screen here? Um, I'm going to start my talk with a little bit of my agenda for the day and what I'm going to talk about next. Uh, we're going to talk about the prisons in Bahrain first, and then who are the prisoners of conscience and the systemic torture that's going on in Bahrain. And um, we're going to talk about the different sentencing that's going on for our youth in the country and the violation that's going on for the detainees in Bahrain and different cases and the campaign, because this is a campaign that we just released and launched December 6, 2013 to release all prisoners of conscience in uh, Bahrain. And then what can you do? Next, please. Um, the prisons in Bahrain, we have actually three different security forces in Bahrain. And just for you to have an idea, we have the National Security Agency, and we have the Bahrain Defense Force, and then we have the Ministry of um, Interior. And of course, we have the judiciary system, which is politically controlled to sentence everybody in Bahrain at the present uh, time. Uh, there are a number of prisons in Bahrain. Next, please. There are numbers of prisons in Bahrain. Uh, Jau prison, which you, once you are sentenced, you go to Jau prison. The occupancy of Jau prison is about 1,600. But at the present time, registered, sentenced um, detainees or prisoners is around 3,000. So that can tell you the double occupancy in that Jau hospital. We have the dry dock, which is the detention. And to give you an example, a, a room, a cell that um, occupies supposedly four people, you will have 12 and 13 there on, on the floor. These are different prisons in Bahrain, and there's around 23 for 760 kilometers. Can you imagine? Bahrain is three times the size of Washington, D.C., but we have so many prisons, and they're still, as we speak, they are building more prisons in the country, and that tells you what's the future for the people of Bahrain. Next, please. The detainees, we always say that the prison at the present time is the best university you will ever enter in Bahrain because of the doctors, nurses, teachers, politicians, uh, sportsmen, uh, journalists, religious men, human rights defenders, uh, college students, all kinds of different students, kids, you just name it, you will have it at prison. And what they're doing right now, the detainees are teaching each other different things. So I'm hopefully we have a good graduate from that school because I am one of these graduates. Um, this is just a sample. Hussein Ahbel is a photographer and he's been in detention and he hasn't been sentenced. Next, please. Uh, Ahmed Hamidan, this is his kid one year. Unfortunately, he was not able to hold his kid until he was in the hospital a week ago and the family found out that he's at the hospital and they ran and they put the kid in his hand to touch his first poor child for the first time. Next please. Systemic torture, you just name it. You go into the internet and you can find the definition and this is all have been happened to all of us. Whether hanging, uh, being beaten, cigarettes, electrocuted, um, sexually harassed, sexually assaulted for some and more and more. And especially the uh, people in Bahrain, we have a bit percentage that they have sickle cell disease. And one of the first things that they do to us, they put us in a cell that is freezing cold, and you go into your sickle cell crisis. Next, please. Um, this is our campaign, and you can see it says a size, I am free or ana har. And this is the sign of sumud that everybody uh, has in Bahrain. And this is actually when we see somebody from far away, we do this, because it means it's persistent, and we will continue to go on until we get our justice. Next, please. 
um, just to give you an, a different taste of who are in prison, this is Muhammad Abdul Karim, 26 years old. He's a graduate of uh, Pune University. He's been sentenced to 15 years in prison. Next. Um, this is different sentencing to show you, and please keep in mind the age of this youth and the sentencing that happened to them. Uh, Hamid Safi, 25 years old, he's sentenced to 37 years in prison and still to go as we speak. Hussein Fardan, 17 years old, sentenced to 38 in prison. Talib Ali, 15 years old, sentenced to 50 years in prison. Saeed Harris, sentenced to 25 years in prison. Ibrahim Shargi, 15 years old, sentenced to 25 years in prison. And I keep saying that the Bahrain needs to have a nursing home by the time these people go out. Next, please. This is only in one day sentencing. This is was the 20th of January, 2014. 14 kids were sentenced between 15 and 20 years. Jafar Abu Dris, 10 years in prison. Sadiq Abdullah Al-Ghasra, 15 years. Rida, which is brother of his, 15 years. Ali Umran, 10 years. Wa'il al ghannabi 15. Mustafa Ali, 15. Jabal al ghannami 15. Ibrahim al ghannami 15. Hussein Jafar, 10 years. This is a total of 215 years in prison for only one day only. So you can imagine the sentencing that goes on on a daily basis. Um, we're going to talk about the violation. Although we go with our campaign and we don't know what's going to happen, but we leave everybody is a political prisoner in Bahrain and they all have to be released. This is what happens when family prisoners go to visit their family members. If they have a chance, they will get to see them once or twice a month. Otherwise, what will happen, they will cancel their visitation while they've been waiting there for hours and hours. Sometimes they go early in the morning and they wait until 3 in the afternoon and they tell them, sorry, we don't have time for you, go back home again. And this is families complain. One of the things that's going on at the present time, which is a violation for all prisoners, and that's in the Treaty of the United Nations, they are not allowed to get thermals, they're not allowed to have warm clothing. Believe it or not, a person will have two underwears and he has to exchange the two underwears to get another two underwears in a month. We're not talking even about uh, clothing. Just going to talk a bit more about this. Um, they, at the present time, because of the water, uh, they only have three heaters for uh, 3,000 detainees in one prison. So they don't have hot water to bathe. So they are bathing in cold water. Um, clothes, are, like I said, they don't have. There's no exchange. Plus, next please. Even phone calls, when they go for a phone, they sit next to you, right, as I'm closing, sat, sitting next to Lord Ivory, and um, they will monitor your calls. And can you imagine, each detainee in prison, it costs about 130 dinars to stay in prison. For what? To buy their own clothing from the canteen that they are providing in the Ministry of Interior, and to buy food that they offer. Although boxed food or canned food the family members can bring for them and they can get them their clothing but they're forbidden to do that. I think we are reviving the, the economy of the prisons in Bahrain. Next please. The latest thing, they've forbidden people to have Kleenex or napkins and they're all having flu because of the weather and therefore they are tearing their clothes and using it as a napkin, uh, the detainees in the country. Different cases I would like to bring to your attention too. Next please. Um, Dr. Ali Laikri, he is my colleague. He is um, a doctor who is an um, orthopedic uh, consultant. He's the only one in the GCC country who can have surgeries, perform surgeries on congenital defect children. He's been sentenced to five years in prison, and his accusation was to overthrow the regime and public gathering. Although the overthrowing of the regime, it was dropped from all our cases, the 58 cases of the medics, but he got sentenced to five years in prison. For what? for treating the protesters and for being a witness for the atrocity of this country in 2011. Next. And he has just had a baby boy who had not seen yet. Ibrahim al-Dimistani, he is an occupational nurse. He is the executive secretary for the Bahrain Nursing Society. He's been sentenced to three years in prison. He was tortured, as we all did, um, and he has a coccyl uh, injury. He cannot sit. They're drugging him and giving him only drugs to maintain his pain, and he's begging them to have hydrotherapy or physical therapy, and they're so they're not doing that for them. You know, the medication in the country for the detainees, we are not allowed to bring the medication to the detainees, so the detainees stays without medication for weeks. Now, just recently, they told them, we're not going to offer them any medication. Please bring the medications of these, patients, of these detainees to us. So 
when you deliver it to them, just wait until they will give it to the uh, detainees themselves. Hassan Mahtoug is an emergency nurse. He's one of the nurses who have two weapons. He's a nurse and a witness for what happened in 2011, and he's a, a photographer. He was sentenced to three years in prison, and his main uh, sentencing was due to public gathering. This kid, bless his heart, he went to the police officer a month ago, and he asked them, and he begged them to uh, see his father, and he was, he was in ICU. The next week, he went to the officer, and the officer told him, aren't you the one who wrote a letter stating that you want to go visit your father? He told him, yes, I wanted to visit him. Now I'm going to go bury him. Can you allow me to go do that? And they still refused to let him go and bury his father. He's supposed to be um, released on 24th of March next month. And I hope he will get released because the idea and what's going on at the present time is anybody who gets sentenced, they, uh, they release them for 24 hours and they give them another case and they put them back in prison. Next. Other medics, which are new cases, Sayyid Saeed al Alawi, he was detained in 2012. He was sentenced to 15 years in prison. Why? Because he's just working. And Qasim Baddah, he's been in detention since August 2013 and still not released. There is another doctor, which I didn't mention his name there, Jassim al Durazi. He was detained on the border between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia. And he's still been detained there in their prisons for six months. Why? Because he brought some medication that's not available in Bahrain. He was bringing it to his mom and his family, and that's why he was detained and still in detention in Saudi Arabia. Um, Ali Saad, he's a blind guy. He was detained in 2010. Again, he's detained again at the present time. This is a picture to show you he's in the hospital. Temperature was 18 degrees. He was sh with the short sleeves, with slippers, chained and uh, with a guard with him, although he is blind. His accusations are what he's working on bombing in the country, and this is pathetic. There are different cases, and I want to mention their names, please. Um, bear with me. Jasim al-Banna, 17 years old, he has a morphinism syndrome in his heart, and he is detained. He has a little bit of mild retardation, but he is detained till now. Abdullah Jabir, he has teeth pain. They're all in jail hospital. They've been sentenced, but they're not, they don't get any treatment. Muhammad Habib, he has feet pain, severely feet pain, very swollen due to torture and no treatment. Sayyid Mustafa Musawi, he has a, a radial palsy, which there is like almost like a paralysis to his arm because of torture with no treatment. Abdul Aziz Abdullah, this is the guy he was accused of killing a police officer during 2011. He has severely swollen legs, he barely can walk, and he still, until this time, he was not treated at all. Ali Jaziri, he's a fracture of his feet with Jafar Nido, we call him fracture of his feet. Both are on slabs, but no gyps, no cast, no x-ray, no pain medication, no nothing, and they're all in prison. Um, Ahmed Al Arab. He was mentioned in Amnesty. He's in his fourth year of uh, nursing school at the Royal College of Surgeons in uh, Bahrain. He was severely tortured, and because of the severe hanging, he has pain in his shoulders. He hasn't seen his family yet, and all this news I got from my colleagues, the detainees who are in, in cell with him. Next, please. These are our kids. This family actually have eight people of their families, and their fathers are all detained in prison. Next, please. This is to show you the sickle cell disease and how they come into the hospital and they sat there and they are chained and waiting to be treated at the hospital. Next. Ahmed al maqdad this is our little child. He is 15 years old and he was sentenced to 10 years in prison under the terrorist law. Why? Because he's a kid. Thank you. Next, please. Um, we have Hassan Mahdi. He's sentenced to 15 years in prison. He had multiple surgeries to his head. He has severe headache, blurred vision, and no treatment, and he is in jail. Um, schooling in Bahrain. These are just to show you numbers of different numbers uh, that have been documented for how many children have been detained in Bahrain. 2011 by the BCHR, they said 188 has been um, detained, 120 in 2012. 9th of October 2013, 13 of them were detained in December 2013. We believe there's more than 400. There's no schooling. They don't allow them to take their exams. If they allow them to take their exams, that means after harassment, after the parents running around between Ministry of Education and Ministry of Inferior Interior in order for them to go for schooling. This is one small, tiny village. They have 10 detainees. Next, please. 
Um, this is their pictures, and you just see the ages, 20, 17, 17, 20, in one single tiny village. Next, please. And the, and the list goes on, but I just wanted you to see phases of how what youth is going through in Bahrain. This is a family, this is Abdul Aziz that I told you, his legs are swollen, and this is our, um, his parents. Next, please. Um, this father, he has three kids in jail, and now he's going into a period where he is like a ischemic, attack or psychological attack that's going on to him that he comes and goes when he's talking to you because of the severe depression that he's going through. This is a lady, she had buried her son, her buried, sorry, she buried her husband and her son was detained the next day and his name Jason. A lady of, to say, persistent and smooth is this lady, an old lady. They are trying to let her migrate her house to another area. Well, I know two families at the present time. They keep attacking their homes and burning their houses, and they end up giving up their homes to go into another area. Why? Because they are in a in an village next to the palace of the king, and they want the pieces. And this is another new issue that's going to happen in Bahrain. And I have really worries about the migration of these people from these uh, villages. Next, please. Women in prison, we have Zainab al-Khawaja, Raihan al-Musawi, Nafisa, Munira, and Ibtisam, and still to go. Our prisons have not finished from having uh, different women going into jail. Next, please. Um, this is a letter to show you how a, a culture of impunity that we live in. These are different cases. Uh, for example, how the, uh, the uh, police officers, they're always with torture, they get acquitted. For killing people, they get acquitted. And what is the deal? Our kids go into jail for 50, while a police officer who have killed six people injured under torture, they are sentenced to two months in prison. And while Dr. Ali Al-Ikhri, who treated the uh, injuries, he's in jail for five years. What kind of judiciary system we are living in? Next, please. This is Sadiq. The first picture is a Sadiq of an actress that he was detained by the authority of Oman, handed to the authority of Bahrain, and still have nothing. We haven't heard anything of him. And there's a rumor that he might have been killed. And we'll wait and see. And the other picture, a little kid who was just watching through the window. And he got hit with third pallet shotgun, which is, is being used massively in Bahrain. And there's no much of attention all over the world to speak about um, uh, a, a, a gun or uh, the bird pallet. Sure. That you're, it is forbidden to be used on um, people. And it's only used on animals. But in Bahrain, we are the animals. And they use it on us. How dare they do this, and how dare the world is being very quiet about this issue. Next, please. This is talking about culture and purity. Yesterday, on February 10th, 2011, Sayyid Ahmed al Musawi was detained. Yesterday, last night, his brother was uh, detained. And to show you, you will see one person with three, four police officers with him. This is our campaign. We look and we look into, and our vision is to have Bahrain prisons empty completely for prisoners of conscience. We need to know our prisoners, their names.